What's going on, everybody? It's Earn from the Fire Resistant Podcast. Remember, I am one half of the Fire Resistant Podcast on Twitch. You can follow us at uh, twitch.tv forward slash fire resistant. And uh, what I do on here is I talk about pop culture things. I give my earnest opinions. I'm Earn. How are, how are you doing? If you would uh, like and subscribe down below uh, or join us on Twitch uh, every Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. If you want to talk to us live, we filled all things. Oh, my Texas accent came out there. Uh, we talk about all things between wrestling and Jesus. So any questions that are TOS friendly, that's what we do. So today, let's talk about something that, as you can see, in the background, we got pop right there and a pop right there. Batman Day just happened, right? And what makes Batman so good? You know, I, I try and keep these these uh, these videos like 10 minutes because that's what the algorithm is or whatever supposedly it is. You can only keep people's uh, attention span for for that long but ultimately um let's talk about the cape crusader like i let's let's talk about so my first interaction with batman is i'm 41 i was at my grandma's house way back when our ba baby urn was like five or six and uh, i i would go to my grandma's house for the summer and on uh, whatever channel it was in houston i think it was like channel 20 uh, would in the middle of the day would have reruns of Batman 66. So my first interaction with Batman really ever was Batman 66, Adam West, you know, carrying the bomb around, you know, the, you know, the, the Joker laughing all the time, Riddler, basically uh, uh, just a different iteration of the Joker. Um, with like, you know, what are you doing? Or what is it? Uh, I forget. Uh, let's not go that direction. Anyways. And then, you know, you know, my, you know, the very first loves of my life was Julie Newmar and, and Catwoman and, and, um, and Burgess Meredith as, as Penguin. There's so many, uh, awesome memories with that show. I have it now as an adult, we've watched a majority of it with my kids from my 22 year old, uh, my 13 year old and my seven year old. We've all taught, you know, we've all had interactions with the Batman from that perspective. And, you know, they're like, you know, that wasn't their first interaction. Their, their, uh, their first interaction with Batman, of course, is a, is Batman animated series. So when they see Batman, the animated series, and they go back to, you know, climbing up sideways on the, um, on the side of buildings, you know, they're just losing their mind. Like, what did, what is so good about this? And I'm just like, shut up, you're grounded. So, you know, fast forward a couple of years, um, or so and then batman 89 comes out michael keaton you know i didn't know who he was really truly uh prior to that what i was uh i was born in 81 the movie came out in 89 you can do the math to see how old i was my aunt tammy um took me to see the movie and uh man was i just like i was all about that batman so i thoroughly enjoyed that uh very surprised that my aunt took me to uh, that movie because you know if you know Joker says quite a few things there's quite a few things that 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 went on in that movie that uh, a, a little kid earned shouldn't have uh, seen but that's okay because I am who I am today because of it but anyways so my next iteration that I ran to of course um, uh, was the Batman um, animated series and I'm telling you people say it I'm not gonna say anything different than anybody else you know, Batman the Animated Series was the definitive uh, Batman uh, of my childhood, uh, my early adulthood, and even, you know, in some ways my, my adulthood because I've rewatched it with all of my kids except for my youngest, and she loves Batman. So at some point we'll rewatch it with, with her. And it's just a phenomenally awesome uh, show that deals, you know, that, that's kid friendly, but also deals with some pretty adult content for its time. You know, now it's very, very minor compared to the other cartoons that are out there. Uh, so, you know, I've, I've loved Batman for, you know, for a long time. I've seen Batman 89, Batman every year for Christmas. We watch Batman Returns because it takes place during Christmas. And that's one of many Christmas movies that we watch. And, you know, as earn earnest opinions continues, maybe we'll do like a list of of all the movies we watch as a family. Uh, I have Funko Pops from all of the movies that we watch for the most part. I want to say just about 
every single Christmas movie we watch, or we have a Funko Pop that we put in front of the TV to uh, to kind of just show that which movies we've watched. And uh, but anyways, back to Batman. Uh, the next real big Batman thing for me, you know, aside from the movies, was um, there. Uh, I I never I remember when Batman Brave and the Bold came out. Um, it was like a weird looking drawing of Batman. It seemed like he was smiling. I'm like, Batman doesn't smile. Just kidding. He does sometimes. And I remember when it came out, I just did not care for the art style. I was like, this is not going to be good. I'm out. And, um, I was listening to a podcast with, uh, Kevin Smith and he was talking about how good Batman Brave and the Bold was. And this is after it had already ended. So, I was like, you know what, let's give it a shot. So at the time, my oldest son was right in that age range to watch the show uh, along with my middle son. So we sat down every night before bed and we would we would fire out uh, uh, the next episode. We started from the first episode all the way to the end. And, uh, you know, Batman Brave and the Bold was a really good uh, TV show. If you've never given it a chance because of the art style, there's a lot of really good Batman moments. The guy, I forget the guy's name that does Batman's voice. He does a really good job. Um, you know, Batman is rarely ever Bruce in the show because Batman Brave and the Bold is a comic book line where Batman teams up with a new superhero, uh, in each comic book or, you know, with each story. So in the TV show, Batman Brave and the Bold, he would always team up with another superhero from Aquaman all the way through Superman and other DC uh, characters that are out there. So it was a good show. You know, Justice League Unlimited was really good. Um, What was the other ones? Batman Beyond was really, really good. Um, There's just a slew of just Batman content stuff that's out there. And, uh, you know, in the Batman world of, of animated movies, if you've never seen any of the animated movies that are out there that are specifically for Batman, you're missing out. Um, you know, there's the Dark Knight Returns Part 1 and 2, which is based off the Frank Miller series. It is absolutely phenomenal. Um, my middle son has not seen it yet. It's a little too... Maybe maybe he may be right at the right age to watch it. But either way, um, he, they've seen most of the stuff. The, the, the newer Batman movies, uh, animated-wise, they haven't been able to see because... Uh, DC definitely pushes the uh, the content, the the adult content in those. Like the latest one, excuse me, uh, the latest one was um, the uh, was it Justice League Dark Apocalypse War. Well, that was a really 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 good story, and uh, and Batman was involved. wasn't the main character, but still very vital to the story arc. That was really good. And then you know with the latest, uh, the last big story arc. In comics, because he is a comic book character, right? Uh, there was a series like DC knows. We all know that the foundation, the the entire DC world rests on the shoulders of Bruce Wayne, and that's why that they did the Death Metal series. Death Metal. I could, the only thing I could tell you if if you never heard of the Batman Who Laughs, that's where it originated from. The Death Metal series. I'm telling you, it is worth the read, or at least look up the story arc. The story arc, whether it be through Wikipedia, it is phenomenal. It was probably the last breath of DC and their awesomeness because of the woke, uh, the woke uh, direction that the comic books are in now. It was a last breath before that they just decided we're good with shutting the doors of the comic book division. We're gonna make everybody gay. We're gonna do all this stupid stuff. And just go completely woke, but uh, that's a totally different other video. This is a this is a dedication to, to bats, and uh, but the death metal series was so good. The the premise of it, if you don't know, is you know we we all understand the multiverse now, but now in this other there's a multiverse, but then underneath the multiverse is a dark multiverse that was collapsing on itself, and a bunch of evil Bruce Waynes got together from different worlds and escaped the dark um, uh, multiverse and started attacking um, the light side multiverses. And that's how you got the Batman who laughs. And it just culminated into just a massive arc that in, that ended uh, a continuity. So really, really good, really good. So what I'd tell you on this Batman day, uh, I, will, I will leave you with this because we are hitting the 10-minute mark right now. The best... 
and I'm staring at him. You guys can't see it. Let me see. No, I, I, you've only got this. I didn't even go to this screen just to show you how awesome Batman is. But my screen. Let's see if I what happens when I if I if I move my mouse. Can you see the bat? Yeah, there you go. There is the greatest film version of Batman in the history of film. Uh, I am so happy uh, to see Affleck as Batman, and uh, you know the Batman vs Superman wasn't wasn't the greatest film of all time, and the original release of the Justice League was not very good at all. But what we did get with the Snyder cut is we did get. Uh, what Batman truly became after the death of Superman. And I was just so, it was so refreshing to see Affleck get his Batman, basically get a redemption from what uh, Josh did or Joss did with it. So um, I think that he is the best version of Batman. He does not have the greatest uh, movie um, entries as the, as the best Batman, but he by far, no doubt, best Batman in the history of, like live film, right? Kevin Conroy, Batman, the animated series is the greatest Batman ever. So there's no doubt about that. So, um, well, with that being said, this is the end of it. I wanted to throw out a video. It's going to be about a week or a week, a week and a half after Batman's birthday or Batman day. And, uh, Batman is the greatest of all time. He is the greatest superhero of all time because he is a human that has trained his body and mind to defeat demigods uh, on a daily basis. So uh, once again, this is Earn from the Fire Resistant Podcast on Twitch. You can find us at twitch.tv forward slash fire resistant. We stream Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, uh, 8 p.m. to 8 p.m. Central Time to uh, sometimes uh, 12, but mo mostly 11. So with that being said, thank you for listening. Uh, you can find us on TikTok, Twitch. Uh, you know, you've already found us on YouTube, but we're basically just trying to build a community of believers and non-believers that hang out. So thank you so much. Uh, subscribe, comment, let me know what you think. Is Batman the greatest? I mean, the, the answer is already yes. Um, who's better than him? The answer is already no. But if you have a wrong opinion that you want to put below, by all means, do that. But thank you for watching, and we will see you next time on Ernest Opinion.